Hey, good morning, everybody. We're going to get started here with the morning briefing shortly, but what the heck is going on here? We've got a rain delay, some thunder and lightning. It's really beautiful. Bird hitting the water out there. That's always a good sign. I'm going to have to wait the morning briefing now for a second. Crazy weather. Good morning. <laughs> All right, we got a little break in the weather. We've got thunder, lightning, rain. I don't know where this all came from, but it is here this morning. Still a lovely morning, a beautiful sunrise starting to come up. Gentleman behind me surf fishing. We'll see if he can't get bit. And fishing, definitely on the upswing for this morning's morning briefing. Good morning, everybody. Hope you have that cup of coffee. We had a great show last night live down there at 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California. It was fantastic. Sam De La Torre was there, and Sam doing his usual fine work, and Bill Batson talking about how to build rods, talking about some personal struggles and how he overcame them, and that is worth listening to just by itself. Bill's an inspiration to so many and tells a great story about he overcame some really tragic situations in his life to become the head, the CEO of a multi-million dollar company. And he's out helping others and doing a great job. And you'll learn a lot about what blanks to choose if you want to fish for tuna, barracuda, throw an iron, whatever it is. Highly recommend you go back and watch last night's live show, now recorded, of course. All right, the Pride two-day trip. We leave on July the 5th. I want to get you updated. Only two spots left and fishing has really heated up. In fact, the Pride had a great trip. I'll tell you all about that in a moment. The Pride trip on July the 5th. You can sign up by sending me a text or get more information. 657-227-6459. Do that right away before that one sells out. That should be a great one. Leaving from 22nd Street Landing in beautiful San Pedro, California. Bluefin Tuna, the Pride with a huge hit, and many other boats in on it also. The Amigo, the Fury, Thunderbird, all these guys are now catching fish. It's time to get out on the water. Local fishing, we'll have a report on that. And manager Mike Morrison, he just had to interrupt our live show last night because he had a great message about a wonderful trip he had with his son Benjamin. Let's get into it all right now. As usual, I'll take you south of the border down to Ensenada where Arnie Man yesterday said the water was getting too warm for bluefin tuna. But I think maybe Arnie was just feeling a little down about how that was because there is still good amounts of bluefin that are starting to bite again off of Ensenada, those pongeros. I love to troll the Mad Mac lures around. They've had great success doing that and hopefully we'll see more catches down there for those of you who like to drive across the border. For the San Diego guys, boy, have we gone through a rough period down there with this bluefin tuna. I mean, we have been looking at it and seeing it, copious amounts of bluefin tuna on the machines, eyeball fish. I mean, you see them on the surface, and they don't want to bite. That certainly was the case for Ruben Lopez. Ruben, my good friend, was on board the legend with Steve Taft. They had 13 bluefin tuna, saw fish the entire time but just couldn't get him to bite. Larry Galindo, a good friend of Ruben's, caught his very first bluefin tuna shortly after midnight. 2.0 to 3.0 size hooks, the best way to get it done. Eight to 10 ounce torpedo sinkers, but that appears to be perhaps a thing of the past because the fish have settled in and are starting to bite. We're seeing better fishing for many, many boats. Last night was a good night on the jigs, moving you right into the morning. There's several boats that had Great fishing on the bluefin tuna. The tomahawk recently had limits. The new Loan found a new good batch of fish. Also, the Polaris Supreme on their most recent three-day trip, just shy of limits on the bluefin tuna. That fish in the 40 to 80 pound class, some smaller fish also mixed in with it, and great nighttime fishing for the Supreme on the jigs, the knife jigs, the flatfall jigs, the Zakanas. All of those working really, really well as it appears 
that that light switch is finally going to go on. And we have described to you, actually the guys have described to me, and now I am describing to you, an area of at least 40 miles of blue fin tuna. And once this thing gets going, it is going to get really crazy. You still want to have that 30 to 40 pound line to fly line with for daytime fish. For the most part, you find a kelp patty, you're going to want to have that fluorocarbon, an absolute must. We like Opsin fluorocarbon. www.opsinusa.com. Put FAN at checkout and you will get a free gift and a handwritten note from Greg Brown. He's really good about that. And Opsin fluorocarbon is right up there at the top. We love it. It works really well. But don't leave your heavy tackle at home because that big fish is still around. The Condor had some big giant fish the other day. Several other boats with some of that fish up over 200 pounds. You just don't know what you're going to bump into. Sometimes it's the smaller grade fish, 40 to 80. I can't believe I'm calling that smaller grade fish. I mean, that is insane. And then sometimes it's the much bigger fish. You definitely want to have the right tackle to get it done. Bring a variety of jigs. Bring torpedo sinkers. That sinker rig works really well. If you haven't seen Sam De La Torre's sinker rig video, that's the way you want to rig up. You can see it here on Friedman Adventures, and you definitely want to do that. So really good signal down there. Now, let's talk about my friends on the 6 a.m. departure boats because this year they've had some spurts of spectacular fishing. Really, really good. The San Diego, the Grande, the Liberty, the Malahini, uh, the Mission Bell. I, I hope I'm not leaving somebody out. But those guys work so hard at this, and they leave at 6 in the morning, come back around 6 in the evening. Sometimes they stay out much later than that. They work really, really hard at this. They are starting to catch some fish. Nothing wide open, starting to scratch at it. But it could be just the precursor to when this thing blows sky high, like maybe today. I really suspect to see one of those guys, the San Diego or somebody with about 20 fish today, maybe better than that, because they're just edging back into it. They've been seeing it. They've been very frustrated by it. But now it seems like it's trying to bite. Grande had eight bluefin tuna. San Diego, 11 bluefin tuna, vastly improved over what they have been doing. So that is certainly a really, really good sign. And I've got high hopes that that's going to turn on. We'll be watching it for you very, very closely. All right, so offshore vastly improved. Looks like it's going to rip good fishing last night into this morning. It all looks very good down there for you San Diego-based guys. And I have some friends. Uh, Nico Anderson's going to be on board the searcher leaving today. I think you're on a great trip, Nico. Get them. Really put the hammer on them. It looks like it's going to happen. And remember that fluorocarbon is really important, especially on the daytime fish at night. Perhaps not important at all, but definitely on that daytime fish. Great jig fishing at night down there on the Supreme and other boats. That bodes well for the future. All right. Let me take you through some islands. And man, LA Orange County is really on fire right now. There has been some spectacular fishing. I'm going to get into the fishing and the tackle that you'll need, thanks to some friends of mine who are out there, members of the Friedman Adventures family, and get you tuned up on that. Boy, I hear some thunder again, starting to thunder and lightning this morning. That's crazy. All right, let me take you down, Todos Santos, uh, off of Ensenada. Down there, more yellowtail, not a lot. Around Punta Banda, also some yellows in there. Really good calico bass fishing on the kelp lines up there in Punta Banda. That's such a picturesque area. You fish up there near La Bufadora and other areas, and the bass fishing, really good right now. Some more barracuda around Todos Santos and some good rock. There's Coronado Islands, similar. There seems to be a lot more yellowtail than are biting. There's been some occasional good hits, but now this bluefin is starting to get back on the bite, guys are going to drive right by. But in case you want to fish there, there's a few yellows. Again, fly lining with a sardine, a good way to get a bite, really can give you an edge when you fish the floral. So keep that in mind. And of course, choosing a good hot bait always makes all the difference in the world. All right. Without getting into where, most of the guys are reporting San Clemente Island, but without getting into the where, there's some conking going on for LA Orange County baseboats. The Fury out of Dana Wharf, 
45 yellow tail, 30 white sea bass, a buck 65 on the calico bass, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And that is what I call fantastic, great, awesome fishing. Really great fishing going on. And that doesn't get any better. And if that light switch is on now, it may stay on for a while. We're out of the moon phase. We're out of whatever it was that was suppressing the bite. And now it is on. And was that just a one-off? Was that just one guy that got in on that bite? The Amigo, 10 wide sea bass, 38 yellow tail for 13 anglers. Mike Morrison broke into our live podcast last night to tell you all that he was so excited. He was on board the Amigo, and they had that great hit. And, of course, the Freedom is out there right now, along with the Thunderbird and several other guys. Hopefully, they're going to come up with a great score. Trevor's first trip running the Freedom alone. Tino Valentine has a back problem right now. Tino, I hope you're feeling better really, really soon. So you can come down here and catch a Corvina with me, if nothing else. But Trevor's on his first trip. We'll see how he does. It's going to be a learning experience for him. But he's a great kid, capable fisherman. I expect big things out of the Freedom and other guys here today. Also, we had the Thunderbird with 24 Yellowtail. Another nice hit. The Pride. Wow, what a great hit. Now, Gino Machino was on board this trip. And Gino is a huge fan of Freedman Adventures. And Gino, man, I can't thank you enough for being a member of the Freedman Adventures family and for all the great information that you shared with me now that I can share with the rest of our family. Really, really appreciate it. And Gino's story on board the Pride, you have got to love his persistence and patience. That, well, let me give you their score first of all because it's pretty impressive. 34 white sea bass, 15 to 40 pound fish, beautiful grade of sea bass and just as good as you could possibly want it. Now Gino was out there fishing and 32 white sea bass were caught about five hours into the bite and Gino was scratching his head saying, is it my turn yet? Am I ever gonna get a bite? We've all been there. We have all been in that similar circumstance. Some of us panic and start breaking out our trout rods and fishing with six pound test. Some of us uh, fall to our knees and start praying to the Lord above. But Gino just stayed persistent and kept working at it. He ended up catching the last two fish on this trip. Great job, Gino. And guess what? The very last fish was the jackpot fish on board the Pride. Gino, great job. And what a great report you had for us. Gino said 40 pound test, dropper loop was the best way to go. Six ounce torpedo, I'm guessing. Gino didn't let me know on that. I forgot to ask him. That's my fault. I believe a six ounce will work really, really well. A couple of fish taken on the slider rigs, three eighths ounce work best. 25 to 30 pound fluorocarbon, an absolute must when you're fishing that rig. Now, Gino, what did he catch his fish on? In case you want to mimic exactly what he did and perhaps come up with the jackpot, 80 pound braid to 60 pound fluorocarbon and a two ounce B52 bucktail jig was what Gino used. I hit that home run in the bottom of the nine. Gino, great report, really do appreciate it. All right, so that island bite is really rocking right now. And again, we're gonna be on board the Pride leaving on July the 5th and back on July the 7th, a two day trip. That should be a fabulous one. 657-227-6459. If you'd like to grab that trip, send me a text right away. Channel Islands. I talked to Scott Buchert. Scotty's up there decking on the Ranger 85. He said they've had great halibut and sea bass fishing on the Ranger here recently. Of course, on the Aloha Spirit, we had that great trip yesterday. Or I guess I should say the day before when they had 15 guys and 45 white sea bass. Another angler on board sharing some secrets with us about how they got bit. Yesterday, the Aloha Spirit with one white sea bass. Man, those sea bass will drive you absolutely insane. Other boats had some pretty good fishing on it, but for the most part, it kind of shut off on us. There's still good calico bass fishing. There's more and more barracudas starting to show up, and those sea bass haven't gone anywhere at all. They're just doing their white sea bass thing, acting fickle, 
fighting one day, not the next, that kind of a thing. So up there, it's been a lot of run and gun type of fishing. And that is really exciting stuff where the captain will run up on a spot of fish and he will, of course, um, pull back and then tell you to drop. And that has been such a great way to get it done. Dennis Monahan, I thank you so much for your great information the other day. Dennis said that run and gun fishing was super effective. Two 10 ounce torpedoes up there working best. 5 0 Aki Twist working good. Dennis said he fished with a 3 0, and that was just fine. And the bite two days ago was over at 8 a.m. We'll see if it's going to switch up on us at all. But that Channel Island bite is not over. It's been absolutely magnificent. And I can't emphasize enough how great fishing is becoming right now. It is really starting to fire up. That light switch is going on. And hopefully, we're going to see more and more of it. In the surf here, it's been pretty darn good also. Finished up with a grunion run. And I'll get into that in a moment. But that sundown bite right now kind of is coinciding with the high tide. And a sundown bite tonight could be very good in a lot of different areas. I'll talk about that in another moment. But some really good island fishing, the offshore scene working out very, very well also. All right, locally. Let's talk local because, you know, there's been all this barracuda around. And that's been super exciting. So we take a look down there around the uh, Ensenada area and the Baja coast producing magnificent calico bass fishing for many of the boats that are fishing that. Diego Nuno, who decks on the Royal Star, he's got a little ponga down there, uh, an 18 foot parker that I fish on a lot. And he's got another guy running it right now for him. And it's been great calico bass fishing. And of course, you can still go offshore and catch bluefin tuna, but a lot of guys prefer to hit that bass fishing because my kids and I have had some absolutely wonderful trips down there in that neck of the woods. It's been fantastic. San Diego, La Jolla, calicos are biting. Many legals, more shorts, some barracuda, a few yellows bouncing around. The conditions improving, water warming up. That warm flow from the Baja coast is really starting to warm up the coastal regions. And just to make a note about that warm water, I suspect that we're going to see some Dorado, yellowtail, yellowfin tuna, subtropical and tropical species pushing into the offshore waters of San Diego. That warm water along the beach, cooler water outside still sets us up for warm water species inside, albacore outside. We still firmly believe we're going to see some albacore. And aren't you going to have fun making fun of me when they don't show up? No, they're going to show this year. I'm telling you. Trust me. No, don't trust me. All right. Um, so the coastal region, as we move up, Dana, that area, a lot of short calico bass. Really, really good. Now, San Pedro, Long Beach area, Horseshoe Kelp, Isers Reef, zones like that have been pretty productive. Yesterday was a funny day, though. It got off the bite, kind of. I mean, it was still pretty darn good. I mean, the native sun, they were up there over 40 barracuda and 40 mixed bass. A lot of great stuff. I mean, they had a nice catch, no question about it. A lot of action, really, really fun fishing. Also out yesterday, several other boats with not that big barracuda score that we saw here recently, but decent. Nothing to scoff at. Victory with 24 guys, 47 barracuda, and they still are all topping off with limits of sculpin, so you're going home with great any fish enterprise with 40 barracuda maybe just a down day i'm hoping i'm hoping that that's not the end of it because we've seen too much of that in our recent past where these gars show up you get a big hit and then they're gone it's not like the old prehistoric days when i was a kid when those gar would come in here and you'd have them for a month or two just biting full rack all the time and we're hoping that is going to be indeed be the case and same thing with the sand bass if we get more sand bass in here. Obviously, that was not a huge migratory bunch of sand bass that moved in here. It was spot fish, I think, biting. Live squid contributed to that. We're still in the game, though, on that, and it would be great to see more and more of that. So there's still some darn good local fishing. It's a lot of fun. The weather's perfect right now. And, you know, I'm the eternal optimist, so I'm always thinking it's going to bite right around the corner. More importantly, a day on the water, you can't beat that whether you're doing what this guy's doing behind me or you're out on a half day boat or you're out chasing big blue pen. it's all great now 
coastal region up there in Marina del Rey and Redondo releasing a lot of short calico bass in Redondo. That's good stuff and plenty of rockfish up there on the Redondo special and those boys moving you up the coast to Marina del Rey. Lots of rockfish up there. Few bass, nothing really all that good. Jeff Yeomans went up to the northern regions on board uh, one of the Marina del Rey boats here recently. And the bass fishing wasn't great, wasn't terrible, but they picked away at some bass up there in that neck of the woods. And hopefully we'll see that bass bite pick up and start to bite. You know, it does seem like we're kind of behind in the schedule a little bit. I guess we've gotten used to all that warm water in these past years. And now that we're into this La Nina, it's kind of seems slower. So maybe it's just starting to develop. We certainly can see that at San Clemente Island and Santa Barbara and Nicholas and areas like that. We had some early spurts, but I think it's just going to get better and then it's finally going to settle in and get consistent. And that's what we're looking for. Bite up there in the Channel Islands. We're looking at uh, the Island Spirit and the California out of Ventura sport fishing, sand and calico bass, some barracuda showing signs of life up there out of Santa Barbara. Hopefully that's going to get going. California is the old Matt Walsh, and that's a lot of fun to fish on that rig. If you'd like to jump on any of those boats out of Ventura, 805-676-3474. All right, let's talk coastal and Playa Saldamondo, just short of Ensenada. Big barred perch are biting again. I had a friend from Tijuana went down there and fished it and had some magnificent fishing. Eddie Leland, Captain Eddie Leland. Today's his birthday, by the way. Eddie and I are talking about heading down there really, really soon. I really want to get down and fish that, and we're going to try some new methods. Well, maybe not that new, but we're going to try something new for us down there. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. We're going to film it. I think it's going to cream the big barred perch in Salamando and some other areas. Can't wait to bring that to you. Moving you up down there around La Jolla, and areas like that, some pretty good corvina fishing, uh, a little bit of yellowfin croaker down there and some halibut. We move you up to the Dana area and there's been some decent halibut fishing on the beach. Here, this gentleman so far, he's fishing basically the low tide right now. Actually, I think high tide was about three this morning, four this morning, something like that. So here we are at six in the morning, tide's up still, outgoing right now. Uh, he says he hadn't had any luck at all so far. This guy likes to dig up sandworms and fish with those. The other day, I had a pretty good yellowfin croaker bite here at Sunset Beach down there, Bolsa Chica. There's really nice conditions and really looking good down that way. I like Bolsa Chica much better than Sunset right now. This is very slow right now. Long Beach, a few halibut, yellowfin croaker up there, and then up there around Topaz Rock Jetty and El Segundo, we see some really good corvina around the jetty, and then El Segundo has produced some pretty good yellow fin croaker at times. All right, boy, I cannot wait to get on the pride. That two-day trip sounds like it's gonna be a good one. Fishing has heated up. It's time to get on a boat. Try to go on the weekdays if you can before all that pressure gets on it. We'll see if this local barracuda here is gonna get back on the bite. And will that bite in San Diego continue? We'll be watching that. A little bit later today, I'll be at 22nd Street Landing with Sam De La Torre, and we'll have a great tackle tip for you. Fishing iron for Barracuda, one you don't want to miss. All right, everybody, thanks again for all you do for Freedman Adventures. Please give us a like right now. We would really, really appreciate it. I met some of our fans last night at 22nd Street Landing. One gentleman in particular pulled me aside and told me how much the morning briefing meant to him. He said he had been going through some tough times and the morning briefing was helping him get through that. And not only that, it motivated him to go jump on the freedom. And I hope he has a spectacular day. You know who you are. You'll be back in and perhaps watch us. And it was really a pleasure to meet you. And you have no idea what that means to me when you pull me aside and tell me that you're enjoying what we're doing. I deeply appreciate you doing that. Take care, everybody. Is this freaking rain starting again? Feels like it. Yeah, I think it is. I better get out of here. Take care. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you again really, really soon.